Yo, 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 broski, check this out. Suppose you and your crew are shredding on some gnarly skateboard. <laughs> e to the X is approximately one. What the fuck? This is something you could do. That's why he's the GOAT! The GOAT! A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. The time has finally come. We are going to answer the age-old question. A question that humanity has asked themselves for at least the past year. <laughs> Can JetGBT create actually good mathematics problems? It's man versus machine today and this is gonna be the first video in the series on ChatGPT and mathematics. Can it create good um, tests for my students? Can it actually challenge me? Can it solve my own um, tests and so on that I give to my students at school? So yeah, you can find the whole link to the playlist on there in the description. I hope you are going to enjoy this video. Before we dive in the main video though, just a quick little announcement. You can see I got a new laptop thanks to everyone's generosity. It didn't even take a week for us to get the 2,500 euros. I got an XPS 15 by Dell. This was the highly recommended one and it seems to be a great PC. I actually really like it. I'm missing my second screen, but it is what it is. Um, thank you very much. And we even get 800 euros more, no, 1,000 euros more at this point than originally expected. So I'm actually able to repair my old laptop up until such a point that I can recover all the data that has been lost up until now. So thanks to everyone, seriously. And this is gonna be the first video being edited on this new laptop. And without further ado, five questions by ChatGBT, and I'm gonna solve them. Let's go. At first, we're gonna be polite, I guess. Hi. Hello, how can I assist you today? This piece of shit is way too polite. Hey there, my bad if I'm not quite up to your bro standards. How can I make this chat more red and brotastic? <laughs> brotastic! <laughs> Who actually talks like this? Not enough, bro. More. Yo, bro, my bet for not bring the full bro vibes. Let's crack it up to 11 factorial. What's kicking my dude? <laughs> Need some knowledge dropped or just want to shoot the breeze? <laughs> Broski, not enough, bro. More. Aight, Broski, my bet for holding back. Let me dial up the pro factor to max. So, like, what's the scoop, my dude? <laughs> Need some wicked info, I just want a vibe. Hit me up, bro. Stay done. <laughs> that is actually fucking hilarious. Okay, with the bro mode on, we can actually get started with the mathematics. Yo, bro. Give me a maths problem. Yo, 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 broski, check this out. Suppose you and your crew are shredding on some gnarly skateboard. <laughs> you are cruising at a speed of 15 meters per second and you gotta cover a distance of 75 meters to reach the reddest skate park in town. How much time is it gonna take you to reach that sweet spot? Hit me up when you've cracked that math nut, my dude! <laughs> my dude! Oh my goodness. Um, do we need do we need a chalkboard for that i do not suppose so so we are traveling at 15 meters per second and 15 meters per second with a skateboard holy shit i didn't ask for a good math problem okay so 15 meters per that's so much per second holy guacamole that's that's about 55 kilometers per hour holy shit and um, 75 meters so that means we need five seconds obviously um five seconds is the answer bro 
You got it, bro. Five seconds is spot on. You're like the math master of the skate park rocking those calculations. I don't believe that many skaters are very good um, at, at mathematics. Um, <laughs> if you need more brain bending math or anything else, just holler, dude. Okay, we, we gotta stop the pro motors. Please stop broing. Bro. Sure thing, no problem. It immediately stopped. You've got any questions on this system, just hit me up. I'm here to help. Um, that was too easy. Give me a harder maths problem. All right, no worries. Let's level up the math challenge. Imagine you're plotting a sick graph. Why is it still broing? Is it too much bro and it can't go back to normal? The equation you are work working with is 3x squared plus 5x minus 2 equals 0. You gotta find those solutions for x that make this equation true. What are the roots, my math savvy friend? <laughs> Crunch those numbers and let me know. I fucking hate the emojis. I, I hate emojis in general, but this is just absolutely abysmal. Okay, um, this is actually the first one we are gonna attend at the chalkboard. Let's do some calculations, shall we? So, this one should be uh, rather easy, I suppose. Obviously, it's just a quadratic equation. So, um, since I'm a German bastard, I'm gonna make use of the PQ formula. It's just a quadratic formula for, for incels. So, um, divide both sides by 3. So, um, it's, it's, it's not equal to 0, by the way. I can divide by it. So, x squared plus 5 thirds x minus 2 thirds is equal to zero. And now we can just use the quadratic formula here. So x1 or two is equal to um, negative five over six plus minus the square root of 25 over 36. Oh, that actually here's a nice value, it's supposed plus two thirds. And two thirds, we can expand this by 12 over 12, giving us 24 here and 36 here. Um, that's 49, square root of 49 is 7, so negative 5 over 6 plus minus 7 divided by 6. So the two values we are going to get is x1 is equal to um, 2 6 or 1 third, or x2 is equal to um, negative, so 12 over 6, negative 2, right? Um, this should do the trick, I suppose. Let's check for this value, for example. So we got um, 12 here, minus 10, minus 2, yeah. Okay, that checks out, easy. We are back, obviously that was way too easy. Oh my lord, what are you? An infant? Give me something challenging. My apologies, my... <laughs> ST map warrior, <laughs> let's crank up the challenge to legendary mode. Behold the diabolical equation, what is wrong with ChatGPT? I, I told it to stop rowing and it's still doing this shit. You're on a quest to unveil the real value of x that satisfies this equation. This one's a true test of your mathematical might. Unleash your intellect and conquer this equation, O oh master of math. <clears> hmm. <throat> That actually seems terrible. Let's try it out. Okay, so that one seems a bit fishy because I don't believe that an equation like this can even yield nice solutions without approximations in the reals. Um, so we can just see how that works out. Fingers. Even if you were to expand e to the x into a Taylor series, yeah, you are gonna get an x to the third power term in there, but not a one over x term. So nothing nice is gonna cancel out overall, not giving you a very nice algebraic solution or something in the process. I mean, the only real thing we could probably do is expand this part by here because it's a polynomial part. So we got um, three x to the fourth power minus one divided by x and we could sure bring this onto the same denominator 2 giving us x times e to the x plus 3x to the fourth power minus 1 divided by x is equal to 0 and if there does exist a real solution then 
I believe, yeah, only the numerator can be equal to zero. So x times e to the x plus three x to the fourth power minus one is equal to zero. I don't believe that this right here could yield any nice solution. Um, this reminds me of my engineering 101 video that I once made. There was a similar equation there and it only yielded some approximate solutions. Even if I were to graph something like this, then the intersection of the two wouldn't yield anything, anything nice. Um, so we can try to find some kind of solution here. Let's try to at least approximate a solution. I'm just going to suppose that we can approximate something. Um, e to the x is approximately 1. This is something you could do. So, um, so that's approximately implying that um, 3x to the fourth power plus x minus 1 is equal to 0. And is there anything nice you could do for x being equal to negative 1, for example? Then you are going to get 3 minus 1 minus 1 is equal to 1. So that's a bit too, too much. Um, if you are wondering how I got to the conclusion that e to the x is approximately 1 because you get in the Taylor series ex expansion 1 plus something something plus and so on. So a very very rough approximation is e to the x being equal to um, 1 for, for example. Um, but it's rather close. So this right here is a failed approximation and negative 1 is rather close. So we get one out. So I'm gonna say that one value for x is approximately negative one. I just take a look at Wolfram Alpha and see what it spits out. But I shit you not, it's not gonna yield any kind of nice resolution. Most definitely not. Have I lost this one to ChatGPT? We'll see. Hmm. I'm not very fond of this one. Um, minus one over x is equal to zero. <laughs> I mean, um, okay, so you won't get a nice solution out. Okay, this is exactly what I thought. Just take a look at my engineering 101 video, link down there in the description, probably. But negative one is kinda close as one of the solutions. So I would say I take this as a win because you can get a nice exact solution out so I can only approximate, uh, approximately do something. A negative one is really damn close. It's, it's just a 20% error approximately, an 18% error. Um, so yeah, I most definitely take this as a win. Please give me something <laughs> challenging that can actually be algebraically solved. I totally get where you're coming from. <laughs> My bet for the previous picks. Let's dive into some legit algebraic challenge. Solve for x in the equation, blah, blah, blah. This one should get your gears turning. Let's go. So this one feels yet again a bit fishy to me because what bugs me is that we have a cube root here and here's square root meaning we are looking for kind of the intersection between a cube root and a square root and for the most part this is not gonna yield something nice i suppose because not very many numbers are squares and cubes 64 for example would be a square and a cube but you hopefully see where my thought process comes from i don't think that this is going to yield anything nice so um i believe it's not going to give us a nice integer solution once again just like before so we most certainly can only approximate so let's give it a shot and 
What we're gonna do is we're gonna see if we can find a bound for x in some kind of way, at least such that we can get into the vicinity of x. Um, so let us take a look at the cube root, for example, at first. So um, what are cubes? Zero is a cube. So if we take the cube root of zero, then we are gonna get a good solution out. But if that were the case, then x would be, let's just go through the process here. So 4x plus 9 is equal to 0. We are going to get that x is equal to negative 9 divided by 4. That would was, that was give us a negative square root, which is not possible. So this doesn't work out. How about 1? Negative, yeah, 1 is a cube. Obviously, so cube root of that would yield something, okay, something integer like um, negative 9 is negative 8 divided by 4 is negative 2, giving us a negative value on the square root once again. Wouldn't work out. So x is restricted to a certain domain, obviously. Next one would be 2 giving us 8. Okay, so we want to get 8 out. I hope you can follow my thought process here. Um, meaning we're gonna subtract nine, giving us negative one, x divided by, yeah. Okay, that gives us a negative value once again. Wouldn't work out. The next one would be for 27, which is gonna give us three overall under here. Subtracting nine gives us finally something positive at the very least. Um, 18, so x is equal to 9 divided by 2, so 4.5. Okay, 4.5, if we plug this into here, we are gonna get 3.5. So we are gonna get um, 3, because 27, cube root of 27 is uh, 3, um, minus square root of 3.5 is approximately, it's a bit less than 2, it's approximately 1, but less than 1. So we are getting closer at least, um, it's a bit less than 1, we are actually already pretty close in that regard. Um, is approximately, I would say, 0.9. So let us try the next one out. So for this value of x, it's actually not too far off. The next cube would be for 64. Um, yeah, 64, 4 times 4 times 4. Um, so uh, 64 minus 9 is 55. And 55 divided by 4, just approximately. So this is approximately implying, is this a mathematical symbol? I don't think so. About 16, right? So we get square root, no, so we get um, 4 minus the square root of 16 minus 1 is 15. That is way too far off. So this right here is already gonna give us something pretty close to zero. So I can at least say that x is gonna be bounded between not 16, 15 also probably wouldn't work out. In that regard, I would just say that x is bounded between um, 15 and 4.5. 15 is way too much, as we see here, it's close to zero, but 4.5 is actually rather close to what we want to have. It's approximately one overall. So I would say we are in the vicinity of x is approximately five, such that we can solve this equation, kind of, approximately. I hate approximating. But it's a good skill if you have it, okay? Um, it's, it makes your life easier. Let's check with War from Alpha and let's see if we win or if JetGPT takes the final um, takes the final challenge to its side. Let's see. All right, without further ado, 
a legit algebraic challenge. Yeah, go frick yourself. I don't think that that's possible. So um, cube root is equal to one. This is not gonna yield anything nice. See, approximately 5.7. <sighs> sure, it's H. I should have. So, um, I don't think that ChatGPT is actually at fault here. I only told ChatGPT that I would love to have something that's algebraically possible. I didn't tell it specifically that it needs to have an integer solution. So that was probably my mistake here. But what can we learn from today's experiences with ChatGPT? What we can learn is, if you are a teacher like me and you want ChatGPT to, to design your math problems or something of that sort, then you should probably be a bit more specific or at least calculate through everything before giving it to your students. But we we'll see how that pans out once we reach that point in the series. That's gonna be a whole lot of fun. But other than that, I hope you did enjoy what you have seen today. And I had a bit of fun with my pro ski over here. Most certainly. And if you did enjoy what you have seen today, if you want to learn more about computer sciences, mathematics or anything of that sort, then the contents of today's sponsor Brilliant might be the perfect fit for you. As you might have noticed by now, JetGPT, at least in terms of mathematics, is not the most trustworthy source out there. <laughs> My students already noticed that too, by the way. That's very funny. But if you really want to learn something about mathematics or anything in the STEM field and you are looking for a trustworthy source that has been shaped by experts in their field, then Brian is most definitely the perfect source for your research. With the nearly 70 interactive courses in all topics STEM, be it mathematics that we did today, kind of, computer sciences, aka ChatGPT or programming or anything of that sort, artificial intelligence, neural networks, or chemistry. No matter what it is you want to learn in the STEM field, Preant is there for you. They are there for you and they can help you learn something new every day. And not only is it an amazing source for learning something in a theoretical manner, no, it's especially good at telling you something about how you can understand a problem visually. And this is basically their core strength, which is embedded into each and every of their online courses. Just let us take a look at the example with the e to the x or the square roots here. Instead of calculating something algebraically, kind of, or approximating the solution, what you could do is you could basically graph the functions like Wolfram Alpha did, and then you can just take a look at the intersection. And this is one valid way in scientific research to find out intersections of functions or maybe zeros of a function or anything of that sort. And this visual approach is also the one that Brilliant takes. It's not about learning something in a completely abstract manner. It's about grasping the concepts in a graphical way and in an applied way. And this is a skill that you most definitely want to use during your studies at school or at university. Because sometimes all this abstract stuff will go over your head and seeing a graph from time to time or nice visualization is gonna make your life way easier, at least at some point in time. And if this feels like it's something for you, if I sparked your interest a tiny little bit, then why not make sure to check out the link at the top of the description, print.org slash maps. If you use it, then you are going to get a 30 day free trial of amazing awesomeness over on the website. Try out everything to your heart's content. And if you think this could be something for a long term relationship, you want to take your studies or research to the next level, then by actually making use of my link down there in the description, you are going to get 20% off an annual premium subscription, which is an amazing deal considering how much content they have available on their website and how much content they are adding on a regular basis. So definitely make sure to check it out and support the channel this way and this concludes today's video. And I'm now gonna see the doctors because um, last time around I was hospitalized because of my stomach and it seems because of my back. And I'm trying to get it fixed now. So I'm wishing you guys a flamble day. And don't forget to check out also all the other stuff that I do, my merchandise, my second channel, Flimby Sword, and so on. I really had fun with this video and I can't wait for the next episode. See ya!